Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Nick Costco, your Jersey Flight play-by-play -play broadcaster, doing another one of our Jersey Flight interview series videos here. We had head coach Terrence Foster on last week. Go check that out on the Jersey Flight YouTube page, also the SFBN YouTube page as well. Today, I'm pleased to be joined now by offensive lineman Keith Newell, who is joining us. He's joined the flight for the first time uh, this year. Uh, obviously, the season is delayed due to the uh, coronavirus pandemic, as we were talking about with Coach Foster last week, but we'll keep churning out these interviews, get to know the uh, coaches and players throughout the uh, off season, and hopefully we have a uh, season uh, sooner rather than later so we can get the Jersey flight season underway here in 2020. Keith, thanks for joining me, man. And uh, first off, uh, just how are you and the family doing uh, doing right now during uh, this this hectic period of time? Hey, uh, thanks for having me. The fam's good, man. Everybody just maintaining, keeping close contact, communication daily. Um, life hasn't changed too much for me because. Uh, the field that I'm working in right now is still open. So uh, I'm just going to work every day and coming straight home. It's really just like the in-between that's that's weird for me now. Like, it's really to work back home. Like, it's, it's nothing to do. <laughs> so it's pretty much just you wake up, you eat, you go to work, come back, and then you just, you're, prepared, you're, you're just hanging out with the fam, staying at home, and really just can't do anything else, right? Yeah, a whole, whole lot of free time, a whole lot of free time. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing in that free time? Just trying to stay in shape. I was going to ask you, I mean, you know, since the football season hasn't started yet, training camp really didn't get underway. I mean, what are you doing right now to, you know, stay prepared for the season, knowing that, you know, the gyms aren't open, you're, you're at home, so you can pretty much stay inside or you go outside and you, you work out outside or you do yard work or you just go to work. What are you doing to stay prepared? I mean, I, I got a lot of space in my spot, so it's a lot of push-ups, sit-ups, body squats and just like stuff like that. But it's really, it's really – uh, back to the basics for everybody in a lot of ways. Like, gyms aren't open, so you got to get it how you can. Um, just just got to stay in shape the best way you can. Like, the track is free, though. It's, you know a, a big set of stairs is somewhere around here. Like, you could get it in. Um, yeah. It's just not as, as luxurious as you would like it to be, but sometimes you got to get like that. It remind me, remember, uh, I don't know if you ever seen Creed 2. You saw Creed 2? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Adonis, he had all the bells and whistles. You yeah. feel me? He got whopped. And then, like, right before the last the last fight, Rocky took him out to the desert. Like, this hell, you got to get it. You got to get it here. You feel me? So, so it's really, <laughs> it really put me in, like, in that type of mindset. Like, yo, if you're going to get it, you're going to get it. And when this is all said and done, we're going to see who was preparing and who was just sitting around waiting for something to happen. Do you like that old school mentality approach? I mean, you really don't have too many. I mean, you might have a couple of dumbbells in your house, but pretty much it's push-ups, sit-ups, you run. You said you find a big staircase, you know, run the, run up that thing a hundred times. I mean, do you like that old school approach uh, to, to working out? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's gritty. I'm I'm a gritty person. I'm not like a, the the fanciest this to that. Like I'm 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 more I'm more that I'm more that type of person and where I'm gonna get it when it's hard to get. Everybody not gonna wanna do it. Like everybody not gonna wanna not gonna wanna go outside and, and get it that way. But the, the real ones they will. So with these limitations on training, I mean you're I mean you're in linemen, so obviously you know, quarterbacks, uh, you know, they'll try to throw a ball around or wide receivers, they'll try to find somebody to throw a ball to them, you know, they'll work on that. Maybe maybe they ha actually have a jugs machine or you know, they'll do something to try to you know, keep keep their hands steady, keep their hands right, defensive backs, a lot of agility stuff. I know linemen do the same thing, but Knowing that you know you're, you're one of those guys in the trenches, so what are you actually doing now? Aside, you, know, you can't you can't lift like you said, so you're doing a lot of the body weight exercise. But what else can linemen do? And I, I've actually seen this before. You know, I see some uh, college linemen, NFL linemen. You know, they can't go to a gym, but you know they're pushing their trucks around. I mean, are you doing something as crazy as that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I I pushed my baby Sierra around a couple times, but then ain't nah. I'm cool. Um, <laughs> I might, I might do it for feeling real, real. The body feeling real, real good. One day, I might, I might try it again and like record it. But uh, for the most part, man, is as far as is line play goes, a lot of it is mental, and you can get behind anything and push it. But the back of my pickup truck don't feel like somebody rib cages. You get right, what I'm absolutely. saying? Like it's, yeah. it's not the same. So a lot of it for me now is mental. I've been playing football for more than half my life. So a lot of it is muscle memory. It's watching film. It's more footwork than anything. Like footwork, hand placement. You get to a corner, a corner of a wall, and get your fit right and do what you got to do. But um, just as far as like exhausting yourself and putting in the leg work, yeah, you you can you can push the truck. 
Um, <laughs> you do, it's, it just it just goes back to what you've been doing. Um, and just just keeping your mind sharp more than more than your body. I like that. So, I mean, you're a longtime indoor football veteran. You've been playing football for a long time. You were uh, most recently with the Philadelphia Soul, obviously a very accomplished franchise. You, you, know, so you come from a lot of championship level of, of uh, experience. So what does that do to help you out knowing that you're coming to a new team this year here in Jersey? Uh, it's also local for you, but as far as the mental aspect in terms of, you know, that championship pedigree you had with Philadelphia, what does that do to help you with your new teammates? Um, just, just bringing in – that championship mentality when it's time to work it's time to work and when it's time to play it's time to play and learning how to separate the two um and, and just just giving my experience to the, to the younger guys as much as I can and just just doing my part now you're a trend New Jersey native uh what's it when it, was that was that the biggest deciding factor for you I mean obviously when the AFL folded after last season you know obviously Philadelphia a longtime franchise you know, they had to close doors along with, you know, teams like Atlantic City, Albany, uh, Columbus, and teams like that. I, was the biggest deciding factor for you to keep playing football? You wanted to stay local? Because, I mean, it, it's, hypothetically, if Atlantic City was still around, you might have went there. But since the league closed in, entirely, you know, w w I mean, was staying home the biggest thing for you if you wanted to continue playing football? Yeah. Uh, staying home was, was a, a huge factor in that um, just because I'm taking the necessary steps to – set up my post football career, my post football life, where I would like to build, start a family, start a business, all that is right now is based in Jersey. Now that may change uh depending on the outcome of whatever this pandemic will do economically, but I wanted my focus to be post football career where I want to start my roots. Second thing was I love my hood. I love my hood. So for me to be able to actually come here or come home and do what I love, where I love, in front of most of the people that I love, I mean, you, you couldn't really beat that. It was, a, it was a great, great deal for me. Expand on that a little bit. Because obviously, again, you're, you're a Trenton native. and what, You just mentioned how much your town means to you. What, 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 does, what does it mean to you with the city of Trenton? It means, it means a lot to me. I would say everything. But if it was anything under everything, it would be that. It is it's the is really like the proving ground. And you know, you you say you, you go places you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. It's that for me. It's been the the hardest, highest pressurized situation I've ever been in. And I was born in it. So then like when I go to other places I'm in other environments or I face any type of other adversity, it seemed light to what I've been through, what I've experienced firsthand and secondhand. Um it produces some of some of the finest people and the finest talent. You may not, you may not hear about it because you know the press only press only only publicize the the negative stuff that sells. But a lot of good talent has come from here, uh, athletically and otherwise too. Uh, uh, great great lawyers, great attorneys, uh, promoters, entertainers, you name it. You'll be surprised at who actually came from Trenton, who's actually been through Trenton. So it's it's a jewel of the state of New Jersey, and I'm proud to say that I'm from there. Now, I was talking to Coach Foster last week. I mean, before we dive into what he uh, said about the community, which was uh, just you know just great stuff uh, in terms of the team-oriented stuff with uh, the, the uh, Trenton community. Uh, what was it like when you know you decided to play for Jersey? But obviously, you had to get to know Coach Foster a lot. I mean, what was that like for you, getting to know him? And uh, you know, how do you feel about playing for him and this organization? Um, just like anything, man, we we only as good as our leader. We only as healthy as our head. And uh, just talking with Coach Foster, like, upon initially meeting him, seemed like a genuine guy. He loved the game like I love the game. And he loves the, the city. And he appreciates it. Anybody that can show genuine love like that, I can get behind. Um, from a football standpoint, he's offered to help me in, in a few ways, on and off the field. And he just he's lends himself, like, whatever I need. If, if he got it and I hit him, he got me. And I believe that. Uh, I believe in the vision that he has for the team uh, and for the for the upcoming season and the stuff that he wants to do in the community. I can get behind somebody like that 100%. I want to talk about some of the community things. Uh, was obviously, a coach, a coach mentioned last week uh, some of the, the youth possibilities, you know, giving back to the youth programs, which are obviously youth sports around the country are going down a little bit in terms of participation, but particularly in the uh, you know cities like Trent and some parts of New Jersey, you know, youth sports, particularly football, 
the, particip the uh, participation has gone down, but when they have a professional team right, right in their own backyard, it seems to help out the community a lot. So, I mean, was that something you were really on board for? Because obviously, I mean, again, you're from the area, so you know about, you know, youth all the way up to high school football in that area. So that, that, that has to be something that's really appealing to you, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be a tremendous, I believe, it's going to be like a tremendous, like, surge in youth sports because after all this is over, I swear to God, everybody going to want their kids to go outside. They're not going to leave <laughs> in the house. Oh, no, yeah. Come out. Like, yo, go do something. And, and working with the flight and back in these community organizations as far as, like, youth sports and all that, like, just having them have that back end, I think it's going to encourage a lot of kids to go out and just be outside again and get back into sports and, and just be active. Come back with your pants dirty. Like, that type <laughs> of stuff. Like, not yeah. sit on... I sit on Fortnite all night long. Don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with Fortnite and Call of Duty, but like I said, <laughs> gotta have a balance. Absolutely. Get you know, get your hands dirty a little bit. Get you know, get get that uh, get that sunburn once in a while. Get outside. Absolutely. So when you're looking at this team now, let's talk about from a football standpoint for the flight and for the upcoming season. When you're looking at him from on, on paper, at least, and I've gone over the roster a handful of times, and I've I've, I've talked to a couple people. You know, I I, I obviously broadcast the Blackjacks last year, and I so I at least know uh, quarterback Warren Smith. So. Uh, you know, again, you see veterans, you see young bucks, you have, uh, you know, longtime uh, players like yourself who have championship pedigree. It's a nice little balance. You just mentioned balance. This is a nice balance with the Jersey flight in terms of the veterans and the young bucks. You know, what's this team look like to you on paper? I know you guys really haven't had too many organized team activities, but it looks like a pretty good team when you actually map it all out on paper. Mm -hmm. um, on team, it's, it's reminiscent of last year's soul team to where we had a lot of vets and a lot of young guys. I want to say it was, it might have been either split down the middle or 60 40, the 60 being the young guys and the 40 being the vets. Um, it gives us, it gives us an opportunity to teach the game to the young guys and get them acclimated as quickly as possible. And that way, when a ball gets rolling, we all on the same page. You can't tell who a new guy and who not. Um, we got the experience and we got the, the youth and athleticism to really get the job done. Um, something, something that I've learned playing arena football, and I've said this many times, it's not always, it's not always the most talented team that wins it all. It's usually the better team. And by team, I mean like that gel together, that work together, that get on the same page the quickest, that peak at the right moment. Like those are usually the teams that, that win it all. So I think, I think we got a, a great opportunity to make that happen for us. Now, being a veteran of the indoor game for a long time, what's what's the main difference? For people who don't know, what's the main difference for you uh, playing line in uh, basically an all passing league? It's obviously it's eight on eight. It's in a much more confined space compared to the outdoor game. And you mentioned how teams gel and, and had the. I, I've never seen so much t in all the years I've watched this game and broadcast this game. I've never seen so much timing and how important timing is in this league, probably more so than the outdoor game. What do you say, what, what do you say to that comparing uh, the indoor game to the outdoor game? It's a lot faster indoors than the outdoors. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a play action in, in a real football. I don't think <laughs> I know you can do that. that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think we got that. But um, it's the timing is important, and, it's, and, and that's, that's another important thing is more than just Oh, I can play football. Oh, I can block. Oh, I can throw. Oh, I can catch. Or I can rush the pass. It's timing to it. To a quick now play, to a three step drop, to a five step drop, to a seven step drop. I only really seen Grady do seven, but um, like all that, all that matters. It matters the pass set. Everything has to work at the right time. And if it doesn't, it'll blow up in your face. You can have a great play, but instead of running ten yards, you run eight and a half. Picked off going to the box. Like, that's everything. The details matter way more in arena football. So I'll leave you here with this one. I mean, if so, again, we'll go back to your, you know, your local ties with the community. Hey, you mentioned that you know, you, it was a big deciding factor for you to come back and, keep, and continue your career and obviously focus on your post-football career as well. So as a whole, you know, knowing that you believe this team is at least on paper similar to the Philadelphia Soul team that made the Arena Bowl last year, and the fact that there, there are some AFL veterans and IFL veterans and, and uh, NAL veterans all mixed in on this New Jersey flight team in 2020. What would it mean for you and this team to bring a championship to the city of Trenton? Because, I mean, I mean for, for people who don't know, Jersey loves their football. And if they have their local nope. team, 
uh, all the way up. Uh, I mean, the, the the support is tremendous. As we saw in Atlantic City last year, we've seen it up around, obviously, all over Philadelphia. I mean, the, the area over here is so ripe with football town. What would it mean for this team to bring a championship to this city of Trenton? It, it'd be inspirational, man. It, it'll mean a lot to me uh, because just the simple fact that it hasn't been done. Um, I've won here on the pot one a level, and I just got to high school just as, like, the glory days of Trenton Central High School was over when they was winning the championships. I went to college at Rutgers University. I went to two bowl games or done, won both of them. Uh, the last one was against Russell Wilson. Came back, it was a crazy, crazy reception. You know, so I know what it's like to, to win in Jersey. I know what it's like to win for Jersey, um, to bring it back just, like, locally to the hood, just on some, hey, we went and got this for y'all. Like, we got Trenton on our jersey. We play here. I'm from here. Like, this is really for us. Man, I mean the world. I, mean, I get goosebumps talking about it because I know what it's going to be like. It, it's, it'll be something special. I know that. I can only imagine that parade down the city of Trenton, uh, well, if and when you guys win a championship. And uh, I didn't want to bring up the Rutgers tie just yet, because I'm, I'm, I'm also a Rutgers alum. So I yeah. want to bring that up. Oh, yeah, I didn't want to bring that up just yet. Otherwise, we're oh, talking about Rutgers for, the, for, for a whole hour. But oh, well, uh, I, I see you blowing up talking about it, too. <laughs> I know, of course, man. Hey, I got, I got, my, I got my, my radio sweatshirt on as well. I got my Rutgers Word. stuff all over the place, man. Word, that's what's up. <laughs> all right, Keith. Well, I appreciate you joining me, man. Uh, stay, obviously, stay safe. I hope, uh, health and happiness to you and your family. Hopefully, uh, we talk soon again, and hopefully with the training camp gets underway when this pandemic starts to clear, and hopefully we get the season in, and I can't wait to see you boys play. All right, man. I'll, start, I'll talk to you. All right. Keith New, everybody. I am Nick Costco from the Jersey Flight, your play-by-play -play broadcaster. We'll see Keith in action, hopefully this season in Trenton, suiting up in that blue and gold and silver and a bunch of other colors as well. Jersey Flight, baby, as Keith Newell, former Soul Lyman, New Jersey Flight Lyman as well. It's going to do for us. We'll talk to you next time on this Jersey Flight interview series.